Tucked across the north parking lot, the zoo's animal care center was a temporary home for a lot of animals evacuated off the island. Not just the flamingos, but lions, tigers and others were all housed at the hospital. The early morning after the flood began, Dr. Lori Rogers was catching some sleep on her office floor. And there was a little tap at the window and that was um, the grounds crew and they had the log that you would have saw that was in there and there was a garbage bag. And they said, we've got the mirror cats. And Oh, okay. All right. Well, let's go where, through. And I'm where like, where we am I going to put the meerkats? <laughs> the bird cage. That bird cage looks like it'll fit that stump. So we just open the bird cage and we put the stump in there. Yeah, there was. Um... But this was no regular rescue. For curator Malou Chelly, this was the rescue okay. that hits home just how close the small African mammals came to drowning. So. Uh, for me, it was getting the meerkats out. After a massive effort the night before getting most of the animals off the island, Chelly wakes up after just two hours sleep to find water levels rising fast. And we just had a look around. We just couldn't believe the destruction. We just could not take it in. And it took a while to realize that there was you know, there were still things to do. We entered Savannah, you know, they had to break glass to go in because some of the doors weren't working. And I remember him calling and asking for a crate. And when I got there, the building was just starting to flood at the meerkat level, which is one of the highest points. And we could just hear those alarm calls. They hadn't been taken out because they hid in their burrows. So when I came in, there was just water pouring through under the door, filling all the burrows where the meerkats were. And we could hear them, we could hear them screaming and doing alarm calls and we couldn't find them anywhere. So then we realized that they were in a, inside a log. We tried to tip the log and get them in crates and they, they were terrified, they didn't want to leave. We tried to grab them with our hands, we couldn't reach them and then we realized we just had very little time, so we basically, Josh and I picked the log, um, put it on our shoulders, moved it to the kitchen, managed to block the two sides that were open with, you know, duct tape and rubbish bags and, and, and big plastic tubs to try to keep him in there. And then, had, you know, he carried in on his shoulder through, you know, water that was waist high. Um, you know, going through, you know, broken glass and freezing water to try to get them to dry land and then get them to the animal hospital. And then, you know, a week later, the group doubled. We didn't even know that our female was pregnant. And we went from having saved five meerkats to really having saved 10 meerkats, which is, you know, one of the few things that really keeps you going. It was pretty great. And, you know, and we know that had we, gone to a different part of the zoo to see a different animal or to try to rescue something else, the timing would have been such that we would have lost them. And it really, like that moment really crystallized kind of how heavy this was, you know.